In real life, French side Troyes have suffered back-to-back -back relegations from Liga all the way down to the French third tier. And what makes this especially strange is they are part of the City group and are under the same ownership as Manchester City. In today's video, we will be taking charge of Troyes at the start of the 23-24 season to save them from relegation and try and take them back up the league and try and compete at the very top of French football. So guys, here we are in game at Troy's, as you can see. Uh, stadium actually looks quite nice. The photo of it looks pretty good. The facilities are pretty decent at 14, 15, 11, and 12. Uh, we are predicted third in the league. Um, so you can kind of see it's gone a bit ropey for this team, despite the fact in their honours section they've only won Ligue 2 twice. So not exactly the most decorated club in France, but obviously as part of the City group, as I did say, affiliated clubs Manchester City are there. Uh, so hopefully we can lean on them for a couple of loans, a couple of sign-ins, a couple of cheeky, you know, little, little backhanders. Anyway allegedly but yeah if we go and take a look at the squad guys you can see we have lots of high player high ability players however the best one savio is out on loan uh at girona another team in the man city or in the city group should i say uh so we will be without him for the first season but we also have the problem of some of our better players are joining other clubs obedort is going to burnley this fella is joining saint etienne uh we've got this fella leaving to sheffield wednesday uh we've got this guy leaving to Cadiz. So you can kind of see what we're doing in terms of or what we're up against using this real world database It is gonna be a bit of a struggle. We are gonna rock my 433 that I was using on stream with Liverpool uh, And if we quick pick without restriction our best 11 right now This is how we are looking so as you can see we've got one starter leaving two starters leaving three starters leaving four five starters leaving and Savio out on loan so you can see what we are up against. We do have, obviously, with the real-world transfers, uh, several players coming in. Uh, we're going to have to see if we can integrate these guys as best as we can. Some are coming in in January. Uh, some are coming in in the summer. So, yeah, we just need to make sure that when they do arrive, we integrate them properly. In terms of competitions for season number one, we have Ligue 2. We have the Coupe de France. Um, the board are expecting me to win promotion, which means at least finishing inside the top two for automatics or getting into the playoff for the promotion relegation uh, by finishing in third to fifth. I hate the promotion relegation thing. I hate it in France. I hate it in Germany. And if we have a look at the pre-season odds, we are predicted to finish in fourth. I want a top two finish. I want us to go up automatically. I don't want to have to be worrying about stuff. So uh, let's see what we can do with this squad that actually got relegated in real life. Our main goal of this season was to have a great showing in Ligue 2 and we got off to an absolutely fantastic start going unbeaten for our first six matches of the season. We did suffer a pair of defeats in that first half of the season but really did look like a great team, especially in front of goal. The key man for us this season was Ante Palavers who was pulling the strings in midfield. He provided 12 assists along with 9 goals this season and was our linchpin in that three-man midfield. As we moved into 2024, we kept the results positive but we did show some defensive frailty, getting slapped by St Etienne 5-0 in February. That result aside, we were still good enough to finish top of the Ligue 2 table with 84 points and move back into the top flight of French football, which really does beg the question, what happened to this team in real life? However, our success wasn't limited to the league as we progressed through the first rounds of the Coupe de France with comfortable wins, only to face PSG in the ninth round. PSG named a rotated 11 for this one and we were able to catch them a little bit cold with a goal in each half to send them back to Paris with a 2-0 defeat. After that result, we faced easier opposition in the 10th and 11th round and even faced lower league opposition in the quarterfinals. So we booked our place in the Coupe de France semis where we would take on Monaco. We'd already knocked out PSG, so confidence was high as both teams traded goals in the first half to go in at halftime all square at 2-2. But in the second half, Monaco scored through Vanderson against the run of play, and that's how the game ended to prevent a remarkable run to that cup final. However, I'm taking this result and obviously beating PSG as a sign of good things to come next season, and obviously we have Savio returning from his loan at Girona. We've also been given just under £6.5 million to spend over the summer, so let's get to it. So guys, here we are on the transfer screen 
for season number two. We've been out and we've been busy. We've sold a couple of players as well. Mama Balde has departed us. He has gone to Osasuna. Looks like a good forward, uh, but I think we can definitely do better. He's gone to Osasuna for 3.7 million pounds. And Repart is another one. Renaud Repart, I think is how I'm butchering this poor fellow's name. He has departed the club again for Spanish opposition. Gone to Espanyol for three million pounds we did get some business done early doors and it is on this other page that replacement up front for us is Vladislav Vanat uh, he looks fantastic coming in from Dinamo Kiev 22 years of age five caps for the Ukrainian national team and attribute spread wise looks absolutely brilliant he cost us three million pounds Santiago Silva is a goalkeeper coming in uh, from Uruguay, I believe, from Boston River. We also signed Matas Hansen from Paderborn. He looks like a brilliant uh, defensive midfielder for us. This tactic has a deep line playmaker in that defensive midfielder spot because when I built it with Liverpool, that was for Trent. So uh, he has those attributes to do that with his 15 passing. Looks like a good signing there from Paderborn. 4.5 million pounds for him. Then on this page, we've got a couple of free transfers in this fella from Turkey, a good centre half, uh, left footed centre half, six foot four, 21 years of age ticks a lot of the boxes there we also have this guy coming in uh, Nigerian youth international as a center back can't really head the ball very well at six foot one with only nine heading but looks like he could be a good option for us in a rotation and Diego Coppola is a fantastic player fantastic young center back 20 years of age coming in from Verona capped to Italy under 20 level for a center back as you can tell that is quite good four and a half star potential ability he only cost us 4.3 million pounds so I think we've invested our money quite wisely if we quick pick without restriction our best 11 for the season this is how we are lining up silver looks like a massive upgrade for us in goal coppola coming into that center back position looks really really good hansen again fantastic at the base of that midfield he's probably going to be our star man out of this uh trio uh, and then we've got uh luca illich vanna and savio that front three looking pretty good for me uh, i'm really intrigued to see how savio does this season because i know how good he can be in this year's game even if we do have to work on his finishing how did he do last year at girona only 15 appearances and five goals with one assist. Yeah, I'll be expecting a lot more from him this season. Uh, Competitions-wise, we have two. The league and the cup. Obviously, we got to the cup semi-final last time. It would be nice to have another run. But the priority is league art and not getting ourselves relegated. Obviously, PSG won the league. Imagine my shock. Uh, if we have a look at the season preview, uh, we are the best of the three promoted teams there, but we are expected to struggle. The Media Dream 11 is the entire PSG team. They are massive odds on favourites to win the league. Uh, so let's see what we can do in season number two. Our goal, stay in that mid-table pack and maybe push towards a European place if this team is as good as I think it can be. Our start to life back in Liga was a little bit of a baptism of fire as we suffered three defeats in our first five matches. But we were picking up some good results like beating the likes of Nice, Lyon and even sharing a 4-4 draw with PSG. However, our form moving into the winter break saw us go on a huge run of wins where we won seven of our eight matches. This season saw the return of Brazilian winger Savio to the club after his loan at another city group club Girona. He had a fantastic year for us, providing 12 goals and 11 assists from the wing. But it was summer signing Vladislav Vanat who stole the headlines as he bagged 28 goals in 32 league R games to not only be our top goal scorer for the season, but he also secured the league's golden boot, beating Mbappe to it by three goals. And after the winter break, we weren't as impressive as in the first half of the season, but still punched well above our weight for a newly promoted team. Those results, coupled with the first half of the campaign, saw us finish season two in fifth in Liga, above the likes of Marseille, Lille, and Lyon. And that also means we will be in the Europa League next season. And last year, we also made it to the semi-finals of the cup, despite being a second-tier team. So surely, we did a little bit better this year, right? Well, we advanced past the first couple of rounds, needing a penalty shootout in that 10th round. But we faced PSG for a second year in a row, and proved to be insanely clinical in front of goal to secure a 3-2 win, with only having four shots on target all game. Shout out to uh, cheeky Kalor Navas for just having a massive stinker. Ooh, good start. Cheeky little Kalor Navas to start things off with. So we moved into the quarterfinals and had to travel to Ren for this one, and it was the hosts who scored early, but we were able to pull ourselves level in the 78th minute. However, there is no extra time in the Coupe de France, so we went straight to penalties, where both teams scored from the spot until fullback Yasser 
LaRussi saw his penalty saved to see us exit the competition. As far as promotion seasons go though, this has been remarkable. But we cannot stop here. We have another £7 million to spend over the summer to make this squad deep enough to compete in a European competition. So here we are on the transfer screen ready to go into season number three and you can see it very minimal outgoings here. We sold a couple of players but only amounting to 600 Okay, we have been out and spent some money. We did do our business relatively early. We have these three transfers on this first page. Pontus Amquist comes in on a freebie. He looks like a great winger for us. Good pace, good acceleration, good agility, nice flair. Looks like he can unlock defenses. Six foot two, left footed to play on that right hand side. Pontus looks like a very good addition for us. Three caps for Sweden as well, which is not to be uh, dismissed. Uh, Simon Olsen, another Swede, comes in for us. Very well rounded central midfielder. Four star current ability, exactly the type of player that we needed in our midfield. He came in from Aaron Veen for £7 million. And Noah Mikic came in from Dinamo Zagreb. Again, a very offensive fullback option. 18 years of age, 5'9". Looks like a, a, a good prospect. Not necessarily first team ready for us, but yeah, you can see that five-star potential there is exactly kind of what we're looking for. £8 million from Dinamo Zagreb. And the fact that he can play all up and down that right-hand side is very, very good for us as well. Uh, Matus Tarmo looks like a, a, a potential steal at 61k. 6'5". 26 years of age, uh, former Czech youth international, but actually attribute spread wise for a goalkeeper. Good concentration, good determination, massive jump in reach, obviously, coupled with the fact that he is six foot five. 16 reflexes, 15 one on ones. His handling is a little bit suspect at 12, but for 61k, guys. You, you cannot argue with it. And then the last one, guys, is Franz Katzig. Kratzig is how I'm probably butchering that guy uh, from Bayern Munich. Uh, on a freebie, it's a little bit of a hybrid, this guy. Can play left back, can play centre mid, can play in a lot of different positions. Seems well-rounded. No absolutely standout attributes, but a majority of them are between 11 and 14. So that is good enough for me. 22 years of age, coming through Bayern's youth setup, you know he is going to be pretty impressive. If we go and have a look at the uh, best 11 that we've got for the season, this is how we are going to be shaping up. And if you look at the team from Hansen in the defensive midfield spot forward, I think we're really, really good. Obviously, Van Aert had a fantastic year for us last season. We're potentially a little bit suspect at the back. Two three-star players, two two-and-a-half-star players, and our three-star goalkeeper probably needs a little bit more work over the course of the season. But at least we're going to show some entertaining football. We're going to score some goals, and that is the main thing, isn't it, that teams want to see. Talking competitions, though, we do have the Europa League. We do have to qualify for it. Uh, we go into the third qualifying round, so if we win that, we go into the playoff. Win the playoff, you go into the league phase. So I'll be optimistic about us uh, doing well in that competition. We've been pretty good in the Coupe de France, and the board are expecting a mid-table finish, actually, in Liga. If we have a look at the season preview, that's kind of where the, uh, the uh, bookmakers have us as well. Yeah. Mm. Kevin De Bruyne is at PSG. That's a problem. Do they need Kevin De Bruyne? Seems a bit of an embarrassment of riches to me. Anyway, season three, let's go. First season in Europe with this team. And as I said, it is our first season in Europe. So let's talk about that European run. In the third qualifying round, we were drawn alongside Wolfsberger from Austria and dominated the first leg in France, even after going a goal behind to win the game 3-1 on the night. The second leg was a bit more of a contest with the game ending in a 2-2 draw to see us move into that playoff round. That meant that we were one tie away from the Europa League league phase and we had to defeat our second Austrian opposition as we faced Sturm Graz. And I was confident about advancing here. This time the first leg was on the road and Sturm Graz were much better than I was expecting and won the tie 4-3 on the night, but with the second leg in France, I was still confident. But I probably shouldn't have been, as we couldn't overturn the deficit with the second leg finishing in a 1-1 draw, meaning we crashed out with a 5-4 aggregate loss. However, that did mean that we weren't totally out of Europe because it was the qualifying campaign we dropped down into the Europa Conference League. Apparently, this is seemingly our level right now as we smashed everyone in the league phase, picking up six wins and a maximum 18 points to top the league table. That meant that we rolled into the round of 16 where we had to face Wolfsburger for a second time in this European campaign. But here, things went pretty much the same as the Europa League qualifying. 
we shared a 1-1 draw in Austria before getting the job done at home with a 2-1 victory to send us into the quarters. Here we were drawn against Heidenheim and we had to travel to Germany for that first leg. This one was a bit of a goal fest with both teams clearly bringing their shooting boots but we suffered a narrow 5-4 defeat on the night. For them back in France we continued to rack up the goals but the Germans ran out of steam and we won the second leg 6-1 to progress with a 10-6 aggregate victory. It was an all French affair in the semis as we faced Marseille and for the third tie in a row, we would be on the road for the first game. We suffered with a little bit of stage fright here with no one having an overly impressive game to see us lose 2-0 on the night. Back at home, we went behind again on the night but we did manage to score two goals of our own to actually secure a victory but we still slid out of the competition at the semi-final stage. Marseille did manage to go on to secure the Conference League title Title, beating Everton in that final. So shout out to them, but has that run cost us domestically? Well, we started the season horrifically, losing five of our first eight games to face a long look up to the top of the table. However, we seemingly turned a corner to finish the year in style, winning nine of ten to go into the winter break and I was feeling much better about myself. But I still don't get how form can change like that in FM. Vladislav Van Aert continued to rip the goals in for us this season as he bagged 39 in 51 appearances in all competitions. So if you need a striker in your saves, make sure you go and check him out. Star boy for us this season was summer signing Franz Kratzig, who we snagged on a free transfer. The fullback slash midfielder hybrid scored 12 goals and provided 18 assists for us this year, and he is now valued at over 30 million pounds. Not bad for a free transfer. The second half of the season was a little bit more consistent for us and we managed to improve on last season's fifth place finish to climb all the way up to fourth with 63 points. But you have to look at Leon, who were involved in the promotion relegation playoff with Ligue 2 but managed to survive. So we secured Europa League football for a second year and that is the competition that we do want to be playing in next season. And seemingly the Coupe de France is our competition as we flew through the early rounds with ease, this time avoiding PSG in the draw. We made it all the way to the semi-finals where we faced Lorient on the road. Van Aert gave us the lead when he applied a nice finish to a good move but Lorient hit back after we failed to clear the ball inside our own box. But then with three minutes of the 90 left, Yoga Coppola popped up at a corner to thunder a header past the keeper and send us into the Coupe de France final. Here we face Monaco, who knocked us out of the competition two seasons ago, and despite a cagey game, Savio scored the only goal of it to see us crowned champions of the Coupe de France. We didn't achieve what I wanted in Europe this season, but the French Cup is a very welcome surprise, especially as it's the club's first major trophy in their history. We've been rewarded with our performance by our board as we've been given just under £18 million to spend in the summer going into season number four. So the transfers are in for season number four and yet again we've managed to hold on to basically all of our players you can see three players depart in the club here but again we got our business done early and we got out and we signed these four players that are early on this page um, we do have a couple to talk about first of all the signing from red bull salzburg for six million pounds uh, this guy, uh, Guindo, Guindo, looks like a good fullback option for us. Electric physicals. I'm a big, big fan of a, an attacking fullback, especially with physicals like that. International experience, albeit 15 caps for Mali. Uh, looks like a brilliant player to go up and down that left-hand side for us. Merlin Roll is another player for us. He looks like he can play anywhere on a football pitch, except from in goal, which I love to see. He's six foot four, 24 years of age. He's German, good stamina, good jumping reach, good flair on him as well. Well, looks like an absolute gem for us and we picked him up from Freiburg for six million quid. Nelson Viper comes in for striker competition. Uh, another German, another six foot four German. You absolutely love to see it. Uh, 17 jump and reach high determination on him. Coming in from Dynamo Dresden for 2.6 million pounds. And Ryan Yates came in as a uh, absolute brute. Six foot three for us. Defensive midfielder, ball winner, can also play centre back, can also play centre midfield. Uh, a brilliant player to come in for us. He came in from Nottingham Forest for 6.5 million pounds and then the last one is a freebie on this page coming in from PSG a central attacker midfield option or he can play out on both wings that's where we've got him from obviously we're not playing a tactic that allows that as much um so yeah another good young player 22 years of age capped by Spain 
at under 21 level and again a real utility man to play in multiple positions for us if we have a look at our best 11 for this season you can see this is how we are set up we are pretty well balanced i would say across the board um hansen doing the business from the dlp position but actually all around i think this team is pretty pretty good um i'm really happy with how we are set up going into the year and competitions wise we have lots on our plate we actually make the europa league league phase automatically this time around which is a massive weight off my mind no qualification games there which is great and we also play in the trophy de champion as we are cup winners and of course we play uh we play psg where the board just don't want us to be outclassed they continue to want that mid-table uh, expectation in the league despite us finishing in these europe uh, europe ugh, european places psg are odds on favorites vanderson gets into the media dream 11 there but we are now 100 to 1 to win the title carlo ancelotti is also now the psg manager so i'm expecting to struggle even more against them this year cheers don carlo let's move into simulating season number four We opened our campaign with the Trophy de Champion where we took on league winners PSG and this was just one-way traffic. They fired in three goals before Savio scored nothing more than a consolation goal for us in the 94th minute. And that PSG dominance would have been something that we would have faced in the league as well this year. We started our season much better than we have done previously, but we still cannot get a result against PSG. But it did seem that every other team in France was beatable. This season, Savio was back to his creative best, racking up 27 assists alongside 12 goals of his own to really show why Manchester City have snagged him in real life. The best of the summer signings was former Freiburg man Mernon Roll, who played 45 games in all competitions in central midfield and scored 20 goals and got 20 assists while having a 7.14 average match rating. After the winter break, we came back nice and refreshed and were able to finish the season strong to achieve our best points return of 67 points to finish second in the table. But you can see what we're up against here as PSG only dropped six points all season as they went unbeaten for a second time in four years and for a second season in a row we made it all the way to the coupe de france final even beating the likes of lille and monaco on the way this year we'd faced nice in the final and completely blew them away with savio scoring an impressive brace as part of a 3-0 win to secure back-to-back -back french cup trophies so we clearly made strides domestically this season, but how did we get on in Europe? Well, we were actually in the Europa League league phase proper this season and had a great time of it, winning six of our eight games with the only loss coming on the road to Benfica. Those results saw us finish second in the table and we were automatically into the round of 16 where we had a terrible draw as we were handed RB Leipzig. Of course, they were the best team to come through the playoff, and of course, we were drawn against them. We had to travel to Germany for this one and our keeper had an absolute stinker, conceding four goals from the seven shots on target in a disappointing 4-1 loss for us. Back in France, the Leipzig keeper returned the favour, shipping four goals from just five shots on target. But sadly, our defence didn't stand as strong as Leipzig scored three times themselves to move on with a 7-5 aggregate win. What is the goalkeeper doing? Season 4 was sensational for us and we will have Champions League football for our fifth and final season. So guys, for our fifth and final season, we actually don't have a lot of major business to talk to you about. The only major outgoing was Santiago Silva, the, the keeper that we did sign. He has now departed to go to Lille for £4.5 million. We paid 130 k for him. Uh, what's that? Three years ago now. Uh, has been a solid uh, player for us, but he has now moved on to Lille. That is a huge profit to pull in a guy from Boston River in Uruguay. We are very, very happy with it. And the reason we've changed him out is because we have signed this man. Ilan Melier comes in. He has been on a free transfer. He was brought to, uh, by Al Ali for £67 million pounds off of Leeds. And as is tradition in the FM24, his contract came to an end in Saudi. We picked him up on a free. Absolutely massive addition to the team. He's got three caps for France now and still looks like a very good goalkeeper. Uh, Leonidas uh, Ster Stergu is another player that we've pulled in. He is an absolute mainstay in so many of these rebuilds. He's so good. Good on both feet. 
Uh, really tall as well. No, he's not really tall. Uh, really good physical, sorry. Good anticipation for a centre-back. Can play all across the back line. Is a massive, massive addition. Coming in from St. Gallen for 8 million quid. You cannot offer, you cannot argue with it. And we are all about this man. Yes, Bellingham. But Job, not Jude, Job. Yes, we signed Job from Sunderland for 20 million quid. Can play anywhere through the middle of the park, offering us great versatility. Can even play up front if we have to. Can play up front, can play in the centre midfield spot. Good on both feet. Uh, let's hope he can have as good a season as his brother. Uh, let's just start shouting Ballon d'Or now, shall we, in our best uh, Rio Ferdinand impression. Um, so if we go into the team and have a look without restriction at our best 11. It's actually putting Job as our striker, which I'm not fully against, uh, but I would like to have seen uh, Viper and Vanak kind of fight out for it as well. I guess we'll leave that up to our assistants to see who is best placed. We are pretty good now. Our spine of our team is really good. Hansen, Roll, and Kratzig, the three Germans here. Is Hansen German? He is German, yeah. They're all German, right? This trio of Germans in central midfield absolutely dominating the proceedings. The wingers look really good. I don't know why Savio is only at a three-star player. He's so good. <laughs> He's just so good. Still hasn't been capped by Brazil here. Hasn't been uh, snagged by Man City like they have in real life. But the team's really good. I'm really happy with the spine of it. We've got really good options everywhere, good rotations. And that's just as well, because if we look at competitions, winning the cup back-to-back -back means we are back in the Trophy de Champion for another hiding against PSG. This time, the board don't even care. They don't even care. They want us to reach the quarterfinals of the cup, be competitive in the Champions League as we make our debut season. And obviously in Liga, they want us to qualify for the European, pl uh, European places. The league did take a little bit of a dip down into sixth, um, but obviously with us doing pretty well in some of these competitions, I assume PSG have done well in them as well. We've gone back up to fifth, which is nice. Uh, if we have a look at the season preview, it's all pretty much still PSG. They are odds on favorites again. Uh, Tadebo makes it in and this guy, Vega, Gabby, oh, it's Gabriel Vega uh, coming in after he was released from Saudi as well. 33 to one though, so we are really chunking out the odds. It was 100 to one last season. So uh, it's gonna be a big fifth and final season. So let's get into it. But before we do get into the results, guys, if you are still here, I just want to say thank you for watching the video through all the way through to this point. It could be in and around the 30 minute mark. So I would greatly appreciate you guys always, always for getting to this part of the video. Let me know that you are here, though. Let me know that you are here. I'm going to ask you to comment the word forget down below. We are a team in France. It is semi-racist. I apologize. Yeah, but it's just French. They're all weird, aren't they? Comment the word baguette down below. I'm intrigued to see how many of you are actually at this point in this rebuild and let's get into the results of season five for a second season in a row we opened the campaign with the trophy the champion as we were the cup winners we gave it a bit more of a fight this season but still suffered a 4-2 defeat to psg but joe bellingham did manage a goal on his debut and yes that is vinicius jr at psg i don't know how i'm expected to win this league in Liga, we started our season with six wins in our opening eight games, so I was hoping to achieve at least another second place finish. But this season was the year of Bellingham, and no, not that guy over in Madrid. Job had a great year for us in his first season and bagged 25 goals whilst providing five assists. Our second half of the season was better than our first, but we did have several silly losses in there, which actually saw us drop to third in the table with Nice finishing in second behind PSG. They did lose this season, but that is now seven league titles in a row for them. So it was relatively disappointing in the league, despite still qualifying for the Champions League. But after back-to-back -back cup wins, this is where we had our biggest disappointment. We were drawn to face Red Star in the ninth round and shared a 2-2 draw in the 90 minutes, with Nelson Viper actually scoring in the 94th minute to send it to penalties. However, the German then saw his penalty saved by the Red Star keeper and the third tier side scored all five of their penalties see us crashing out of the competition which is pretty embarrassing even if red star have won the competition five times in their history season five however did see us make our champions league debut and we had a great league phase winning half of our games to finish 14th in the table and make it into the playoffs and we actually finished seven places above our parent club Manchester City. In the playoff, we were drawn against PSV Eindhoven from the Netherlands and we had to travel for the first leg. We took the lead in the third minute through Bellingham and didn't look back, winning the first leg 3-0. Back in France, things were much closer, but we still won 3-2 on the night, making it 6-2 on aggregate. 
And then we were brought down to earth with a bit of a bang as we were drawn to face Barcelona. This time we were at home first and battled well, but Barcelona's quality shone through with them winning 3-0 on the night with Laminia Mal getting a Man of the Match award. Things didn't get much better for us at the new Camp as Barca secured a 2-0 win with goals from Sesco and yet another from Yamal. So Season 5 wasn't our best, but we have transformed this club as they were facing back-to-back -back relegations like they had in real life. If you want to carry on this save over in France to try and overcome PSG, if you fancy it, I will leave the links in the description and in the top comment to my Patreon where you can head on over, get the saves while supporting me as a creator. It's greatly appreciated, all of you guys over on Patreon. And if you want to see more rebuild content from me, guys, check out this playlist. It's all of the rebuilds that we've done on this year's game.